الحمد للہ والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علی وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في اللہ the question is how can we continue to misguide the youth the answer to that we're going to look at two principles if you will that some of the people push forth propagate and spread amongst the youth to cause confusion and fitna and in fact to exalt his via in order to prop up his be beliefs and his be ideology some of this is don't done knowingly and some of this is done unknowingly some people may not know that they have his be traits whereas others realize they have the knowledge they have the background and they realize at times that they're propagating evil but they continue to propagate it and spread evil amongst the youth what inspired me to talk about this is because of the kethra to fitten that we see we get asked questions about sometimes brothers want to marry sisters that have that listen to a particular scholar which is known or at least was previously known from Ahl Sunnah and the brother may go to a masjid that is against that scholar should I marry the sister or not uh, there's a brother who's like this should I be with that brother or not this brother listens to so and so should I befriend him or not so all of these kind of questions which are often strange, especially when they are coming from people who basically have the same minhaj. Where yes, there may be akhta here, there may be mistakes here, and there may be mistakes there. But it, the biggest, one of the biggest issues that it comes down to is we don't know how to deal with our differences. That many of the people that are students or claim to be students, so they could be two categories, they could actually be students that are strong, in some aspects of knowledge but in others are weak and then there can be those who are not even students and those who are somewhere in between because people to follow it they have different levels but whatever the reason behind it is is there is a problem with people not knowing how to deal with differences and with people forcing people to take their view so we wanted to deal with this from the kalam of Ahl al -ilm. And not just Ahl al-Ilm, but we mean the Rasikhun of al-Ilm in this time. From some of the major Imams, and we're just really going to mention a couple of questions that were already mentioned to Imam bin Uthameen when he was alive, Allah Yarhamu. That dealt with this fitna, but you don't hear these things, and these things aren't brought out, and the people still consider the same old tired Hizbi Madhab, and cause fitna and discord between Ahl sunnah when Ahl Sunnah is in need of being one hand, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Karim, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِعَبِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا Hold on, all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do not divide. And, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِفْتَرَكَتِ الْيَهُودَ لَيْحْتُ وَسَبَيْنِ فِرْقَ وَإِفْتَرَكَتِ النَّسَارَ لَيْحْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينِ فِرْقَ وَسَتَفْتَرِكُوا هَذِهِ ا the Prophet ﷺ said the Jews in the 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my ummah al-73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So we know the nusus. And people have heard of the nusus. But it seems that there's a qillah to fahm. That there's a just, there's not quite... That many people seem to understand those nasus and practice those nasus. And understand that this is madmoon to divide, that you should be striving. The asal is that we should be striving to, to cooperate on kitab wa sunnah and not divide. And not divide into groups and his kullu hizbi ma ladayhim farahun with every group rejoicing in what they have. These ones rejoice because they take from Sheikh so-and-so. These ones rejoice because Sheikh so-and-so rutted this one. These ones rejoice because they're having a conference here. And these ones make a poster and ridicule those scholars and deceive the people with law and the So 
The first uh, thing we want to mention, we're going to try to be as concise as possible, which I have a difficult difficulty doing, Allah must stand. The first principle that we have to be aware of, that we have to be aware of, and we have to beware, is be with us or we will warn against you and, you know, you have to be down with our clique down with us on one issue you need to be down with us because we warned against him so you better come on our team and if you don't we're going to warn against you and destroy your uh, your dawa so this principle let's see what Sheikh Imam bin Rathamin said in his time about a principle like this he said uh, this was about if you are not with me you are against me and call he Imam bin Rathamin called this an evil principle and many of the ulama that are even living now, they talk about this. But I don't know why this is knowledge is not being spread to the youth and why they're not intaking that. You know, this is what they need to absorb. And don't absorb just from your du'at. Those people are nothing compared to Imam bin Uthimim. These a'imma dealt with these issues, but yet you still say, so-and-so said, our little clique, our masjid, our thing in, in such and such city, they, they said this. They warned against Sheikh so and so. Who are they? And Sheikh so and so may be a mountain. Wa'iyadim billah. Min dalika. So, uh, Ben Othamin said about this when asked, he says, So this is without doubt in opposition to the minhaj of the Salaf al Salih. For the Salaf al Salih are not a his, they're not a ahzab. They were one his, they were one group. Because they were holding on to Kitab al Sunnah. And the understanding of the Salaf. He said, and, and it was actually asked to him in Arabic, Men laysa ma'i fuhuwa alayhi. Whoever is not with me, then he is against me. That he was asked about this principle. The Imam, he responded, he said, Wahada mabda khabith. And this is an evil principle. And then he said, and due to this, we find that some of the students will be with Shaykh from amongst the Mashaykh. And he is with him whether he is on the truth or falsehood. And if you don't have the tools, you're not going to be able to look, be able to make a, you're not going to be able to have a mizan because you don't know. You're just a blind follower. That's why we have to have the ilm and try to avoid these affairs if possible. So he said, and he is with him whether he's on the truth or falsehood. And he is hostile towards anyone other than him. And he deems misguided and calls an innovator he who does not stand with his sheikh. And he sees that his sheikh is the one who is the muslih. He's the one who's reforming uh, the ummah. He's an alam. And that those besides him are either ignorant or those who are corrupt. And this is a big mistake. Rather, it is necessary to take the statement of he whose statement agrees with the book and the sunnah and the statements of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam bin Uthameen said this in Kitab al-Ilm. So let's talk about this a little bit. So the Imam negated this false principle that when you say, oh, our Dai so and so, he warned against him. So that's it in the in the story. Okay, if you have to make taqlid of your Dai because you haven't done any talib al ilm, maybe you're ma'dhur, maybe you're excused in that because you know you don't know in these Messiah. Maybe you don't know. But if you know better. And if you keep propagating falsehood, or even if you don't know, but you keep getting into affairs like this, and allowing for these affairs to dictate and rule your life, you're on a dangerous path. And may Allah protect us. And it shows that we cannot make al-wala wal-bara. We cannot cause divorces and destroy marriages and destroy households based on our love and hate for du'at. And our love and hate for this masjid, especially when people they're taking, they're in the same usul, the same minhaj, but they may have some masail in which they differ, or they may differ mainly only in how they apply it to individuals. Al hukum al al akhirin to rule on other people. It's just in judgments. But yet you're going to make al wala wal bara. This is a khafa, and I want the youth to know that. Did Khalid Green make this up? 
Well, we just heard it from Imam ben Uthaymi. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has, has many beautiful statements like this. And all of our ulama bin Baz, Imam al-Albani, Imam Muqbil, so many of the Imams, the Jibal, Imam Fozan, they have so many statements like this. How many times have we heard from our ulama? La yuraf al-haq bi rijal wa lakin yuraf al-rijal bil haq wa kama qil. And this is a statement of our salaf. That we do not know the truth by men. So I can't say, well, Sheikh so and so, Sheikh Ibrahim said it, Sheikh Rabi said it, Sheikh so and so said it. That's the end of the story. Maybe if you're in a position of taqlid, okay. But if you have the tools to analyze and look and hear what the dalil of the Mashaykh, you may find even Sheikh so and so and Sheikh so and so, qad yukhti. He might have made a mistake in this judgment on an individual. He might have had a little exaggeration on this individual. Because we don't know the haq just by his name. It's not because he's famous. It's not because he has such and such title. It's not because he's he's Arab. Not because he's from Saudi Arabia. Not just because he's from Yemen or he's this, he's that. But it's 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 only based on the truth. We only know we know the men by the truth. We put them on the scale of the of the truth. But we don't put the truth on their scale. We don't say, well, Sheikh Muhammad didn't say it. It can't be true. Sheikh so and so didn't say it. It, it must not be true. <laughs> Especially when you have mountains that already explain these issues. Well, Allah is the end. So it's very important that we adhere to the haq and we adhere to Kitab al Sunnah and we don't get caught up in this Hezbiyah. The other thing I wanted to mention, to be as brief as possible, is that when you have a, a disagreement uh, over an individual and forcing people, and so many people they attribute this to uh, Sheikh uh, Ali Hassan Al Halabi. And every time you reiterate this principle, they claim, "Oh, you're you're a hisbi. You're like you're a hisbi like Halabi. You're like this. You're like this. Oh, that's Halabi's principle. No, it's not. No, it's not. You cannot. There's impossible. It's impossible for ulama of the Sunnah to always agree 100% on every individual because they're human beings and they see different and they look at individuals differently. Look how many, how much folder we have right now between different ulama, the sunnah over some individuals. Look at this new fitting between some, a lot of people are not even concerned about that, but let's take for example the Sa'afaqa, uh, the other party, okay? How much fit in the between people who were so called, you know, were like one hand and had attacked so many others prior, but now they are attacking one another. And the people are dragging whole communities into the, this fitna. And what does it really boil down to? Disagreement over individuals. And instead of realizing how to deal with differences, and keeping the maslaha of the da'wah, we've made whole communities, hezbi communities. Those are the sa'afaka, or those are the sa'afaka, and these are this one, and this. You know, what's going to be next? And trust me, I promise you, there was going to be so many more fitna after this, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadifa Hadifa. Radiallahu ta'ala. So you have to realize the fitna is going to continue. Where are you going to stand? Are you going to stand strong? Like a tree? Like a tree on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Adhering to the book and the sunnah and the method itself to the best of your ability because that's what we're ordered to do We're not ordered to follow Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so We love Sheikh so-and-so in his adherence to the truth and we love Sheikh so-and-so in his adherence to the truth But when they mistake we make a mistake we can't follow them look at how many imams of the sunnah made mistakes Sometimes in Aqidah can we follow them? No, so what about Mashaikh that are much less in level much less in level we can't compare them our contemporary ulama compared to the qudama in fadl especially in fadl and in al who are you going to compare to Ms. Imam Nawawi or Imam Ibn Hajr who had issues in itaqad so learning your religion is where your priority is and avoiding the fitna as much as possible is where your priority is and not getting dragged into the fitna to where you have to take a mokif and when you see people pressuring you to take a mokif and you have no idea then it's perhaps time for you to adjust who you're sitting with. Because verily the knowledge, uh, the religion is the knowledge So look to where you take your knowledge. Look to where you take your knowledge. Are they people fitting? 
Or are they people of Islam? Islam based on the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the minhaj of the Salaf Saleh. Or are they always in fitna and discord, discord and attacking and and you're you're fearful to speak, you're fearful to ask a question because you fear that you're going to be rooted out in the witch hunt. So ask yourself that. And ask and, and believe me, is that from the minhaj of the Salaf? Islamic witch hunts? And I've witnessed some strange things in my time. Wallah Mr. So Imam bin Uthameen was asked about this issue. They said, the question is said, if some of the ulama disagreed over whether a person should be criticized or praised, meaning some of the ulama praised the person while others criticized him, does this necessitate criticizing the one who praised that person? I hope you understand that because this is what goes on and on and on. Bin Uthameen said, la mal yalzam. No, it doesn't necessitate that. Then the questioner said, what does it necessitate then? Ben Arthamin says, no, it does not necessitate that because the one who praised that person did so according to what he believed. So if he is correct, then he has two rewards. And if he is incorrect, then he has one reward. Especially these are talking about the Mujtahideen. Especially these are talking about ulama. Sheikh Salih Suhaimi said this. Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali said this. Sheikh Ubaid said this. Sheikh whoever said this. Okay. But we're looking to the haq. What is the haq? What was said? Let's look into these missile if we have the ability to do this. If we don't, then don't look into it. And I guess you can just take tuck lead. Ben Arthamin said, no, it does not necessitate that because the one who prays that person does so according to what he believed. So if he is correct, then he has two rewards. And if he is incorrect, he has one reward. The question is, yes, however, the one who prays that person, this does not mean we are bound to criticize him. Because he praised praise someone who somebody else thought was a mubtadiyah, an innovator. Ben Othamin says, I said to you, no, it does not necessitate that. Here's what he said in Arabic. Qutalak la, la yalzam. Look at that. But you want to say this is Ali Halabi's qaida. And you want to criticize everyone who, who said, it's, it's insanity. It's because we're not really studying and then those, some of those du'a are not really presenting what the mountains of knowledge presented, but a lot of times they are taken from young mashayikh, some new mashayikh on the scene, and there's you new mashayikh on the scene that we have some respect for. But we have to look at their statements compared to those mountains. And I want to I wanna emphasize that. That was golden advice Sheikh Suleiman Rahili said to me when I was going to go to Yemen. He said, look at what, I was going to go back to Yemen. He said, look, at whatever you hear and put it on the scale of these four Imams. He said, Imam bin Baz, Imam al Albani, Imam bin Uthameen, and Imam Muqbil. He said that. Those four. And that made me grin when he said Sheikh Muqbil. Because he, you know, mentioned it wasn't just a Saudi thing, it wasn't just this. But these were Imams in this time that were great Imams and revivers of the Sunnah, defenders of the Sunnah. Ahlubidah was scared. But now, what do we have? We have fitting and foga. So we want to guide the youth. We, want, we ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance as well, I mean. So then the question is say, yes, Sheikh, fine. At this point in time, our Sheikh, we're going through a stage. Many of the brothers in the Masajid uh, today have labeled us as Muhtadiyah. And saying that we are misguided because we do not make tibdi of the one they want to make tibdi of, or criticize the one they want to criticize. Sheikh Ben Othamin said, if what you say is true, then those people are followers of their desires. Barakallah fiko, Sheikh Ben Othamin, that said, a person is not criticized for his stance in the issues of ijtihad, except if he opposes the salaf. The question says, yes, the issue is related to a specific man, Sheikh. Him being, and I think you know him, the Sheikh, Sheikh so and so. Sheikh Ben Othamin said, Yes, I say, Barakallah Fiqh, it is not allowed for us to make a person a symbol by which we associate with who associates with him and disassociate with who disassociates with him because a person makes mistakes and is correct. Kulu Yusibu Yukhti. Everyone makes a mistake and they are correct. So that's why we don't make Al Wala Wal Bara based on particular scholars. I can't say, well, Sheikh Obed said this. We only have love for everything he says. 
No, we have to look and see if it's a muwafaq al haq. Sheikh Rabi said this. No, we have to look at, does it have muwafaq al haq? Sheikh uh, Ahmed al Najmi said this. No, how, who are muwafaq al haq um la? Is it in agreement with the haq or not? Fozan, Al Albani, whoever, any of the Imams, if we have the ability to look into the issue, then you need to before you just blindly follow and take a position. And then, more importantly, as Ibn Uthaymeen mentioned, and Shaykh al-Islam has some beautiful kalam about this, that we don't make al-wala'u al bara based on those things. So be careful. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad.